This is Lian So, and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to draw simple ions. In the previous video I showed you how to draw atoms, and one of the examples we looked at was the fluorine atom. However, here's a new piece of information for you. Atoms that don't have a full outer energy level aren't stable. In the case of the fluorine atom, you can see that I've only got 7 electrons in my outermost shell, when you know that the second shell can hold a maximum of 8. So what's going to happen? Well, atoms can gain or lose electrons from this outermost energy level so that it can get that full shell. To do this, the fluorine atom could lose 7 electrons or it could gain 1 new electron. You can probably tell just by looking at that animation that it's a lot easier to gain 1 electron than it is to lose 7. And that's exactly what happens. The result of gaining or losing electrons is called an ion. So instead of calling this an F atom, I now call it the fluoride ion. You'll also notice that there's a little minus sign in the top right hand corner of the F. Where did this minus sign come from and what does it mean? The minus stands for a minus one. You can see that I've got nine protons and I'm going to mark them as plus nine because protons are positive. I've also got ten electrons in total which I'm going to mark as minus ten because electrons are negative. This means in total I've got a minus one charge. You can also tell that I've ignored all my neutrons because neutrons are neutral. They're not positive, they're not negative, they have no charge. Just note that all ions will have a charge. In our next example, we're going to look at how to draw the potassium ion. To start things off, we need to start by drawing a diagram with a potassium atom. Remember that atoms are going to gain or lose electrons from their outer energy level in order to form an ion. And in this case, my outer energy level is the fourth energy level. And you can see there I've only got one electron on the outside. So it's going to be a lot easier to lose one electron than it is to gain a whole lot. Remember that the result of gaining or losing electrons is also going to be called an ion. So instead of the potassium atom, I now have a K plus potassium ion. To work out the charge of my ion, I can see that I've got 19 positive protons. I'm going to show that with a plus 19. If I count all my electrons, I can see that I've got 18 negative electrons. So overall, I've got a plus one charge. The plus one I can just show on my symbol above K in the top right hand corner. So that's a K plus ion. Let's look at another example. This time we're going to draw the resultant ion formed by the aluminium atom. We'll start off by drawing a diagram for the aluminium atom. Remember that when I form ions, we're going to gain or lose electrons from the outermost energy level. In this case, my outermost energy level is the third energy level, which can hold up to eight electrons. Right now I've got three. This means I could lose those three electrons, or I could gain five. It's going to be a lot easier to lose three than to gain five, and that's what happens. Remember that whenever you gain or lose electrons, the resultant product will always be called an ion. So instead of calling it an aluminium atom, I can now call it the aluminium ion. You can see in the top right hand corner I've got a charge of three plus, and I'll show you where that comes from. I've got 13 protons, each one is positively charged, so that's plus 13. I also only have 10 electrons remaining, each one is a minus 1 charge. Overall this means I've got a plus 3 charge, which is why my symbol will have aluminium with 3 plus in the top right hand corner. Just to wrap things up, note that not all atoms will readily form ions. Let's look at an example with carbon. In the carbon atom you can see that the outermost energy level already has 4 electrons. Its maximum is 8. So it's not actually going to gain or lose 4 electrons, carbon will actually prefer to share electrons instead. In doing so, it doesn't form an ion. In the case of neon, you can see that when you draw the neon atom, its outermost energy level, the second energy level, is already full. Neon isn't going to gain another electron in the third level, and it definitely is not going to lose 8 electrons either. Therefore neon's already stable, so it doesn't form an ion. 